This is Bel Air, the lush, luxurious retreat of the wealthy and powerful. If you work in the motion picture industry and are successful, this well-tended suburb of Hollywood is where you will probably make your home. Failure is not permitted here. Our story has to do with the 20th century phenomenon. Name, Charlie Castle. Profession, movie star. Problem, survival. Charlie Castle is a man who sold out his dreams, but he can't forget them. Great, is he? What a guy. Tell him I'm here. Sure, Patty, right away. I know you'll be glad to see you. Yeah. Charles? Hold it. What's up, buddy? Patty Benedict's here. What, did she just walk in? I was told she was going to drop by here, Charles. I raced right over. Patty Benedict. Oh. <laughs> you had me tied up in there, didn't you? I sucked you in. You came in too fast, we learned. Yeah. What's Patty want, Charles? Oh, marry him. Separation. How does it get around? What did you tell her? Nothing. If I had, she wouldn't be here now. I work for the studio, Charles. I'm supposed to keep you out of trouble. Good. So get me out of this. Play ball with her, huh? Play ball? I'd like to play ball with her head. Okay. Take it easy, will you, Charles? Schmooze her a little. She's got 18 million readers. I'll have her out of here in five minutes flat. Relax, buddy. Stop worrying. I've handled this Varego a hundred times. What a guy. You had me scared there for a minute. Howdy, darling. How are you, sweetie? Light my cigarette, Chuck. Sure. What happened to you last night? I looked around and you'd gone. I asked Mike. Oh, but... Smiley Coy had somebody who wanted me to meet, I don't know, some of those distributors from out of town. Who wants what from the lemonade stand? Oh, no, thanks. I like the airiness of this room. Oh. French paintings, dear one? Yeah. Don't you buy American anymore? Oh, let nothing you dismay, sweetie. I don't know one painter from another. He doesn't know one painter from another. I wouldn't want my fans to think I'd gone arty. They're, uh, Marion's hobby. Yep, they're his wife's hobby. How long do I know you, Chuck? Oh, a fat nine, ten years. When we first met, all you could talk about was the New Deal. Or the fair deal, or some deal. I believed in it. What do you believe in now? Health. Hard work. Rare roast beef. And good scripts. You're a lot smarter, child, than you used to be. Well, I had to learn, Patricia. Charlie slogan. You got a message sent for Western Union. I hear your new picture's good. <laughs> It'll pay a dividend. What about your new contract? What about it, buddy? Well, the studio's got the contracts all Stanley right. Stanley Hoff told me last week that you were about to resign. Well, he's the head of the studio. It doesn't cost him a thing to dream. You and Stanley having a feud? Oh, now, darling, how could I feud with Uncle Hoff? Why, Mr. Hoff's always been more like a father to Why, Charlie. Sure. Chuck, I'm off to Metro. But before I go, I want the truth about the separation rumors. Well, that Patty Dick, she's always trying to tag me. The rumors are just that, darling. Rumors, no basis. Well, then why in the Marion world... Marion has the kid at the beach because he's got a cold. I don't think I'd ever forgive you, Chuck, if someone else printed your divorce story before I did. I hope you understand that. Oh, he understands that. Do I? Patty, what Charlie means by that is... Shut up for five minutes. I want my gossip from the horse's mouth, not his tail. Come on, Patty, it's his living. Is it impossible for you to be democratic? Charlie! Fix yourself a drink, bud. Look, I don't want you to get stiff. Take a chill. How are you, Miss Benedict? Fine, thank you, Nick. Well, that's nice. I got a table ready for your up. Thanks, character. One thing I've never understood. Why did the studio give Bliss back his job after that scandalous mess? Buddy Bliss is a first-rate publicity man. He's also a close personal friend. I know. 
You were a character witness for him, and you paid all his legal fees. I don't get your point, sweetie. Buddy went to jail for ten months. Besides, it's all past and forgotten. It's not forgotten if I choose to revive it. Now, why would you want to do that? Some of you seem to forget that this town has got to keep its skirts clean. At the studio Christmas party, this idiot steals your car. Borrowed. He borrowed my car. He drives a lot half drunk. He wasn't drunk, sweetie. That was cleared in court. The fact remains he hit and ran. How friendly did you feel when Big Brains here ditched the car in your front lawn and the police walked in that Christmas Eve? All he did, now, Patty, all he Patty. did, your dear friend, was to almost ruin a career right out of the storybooks. I thought we could be human enough to forgive that. Didn't he step up in time and take the blame? Well, I still think it was very poor public relations giving him his job back that way. Patty, with all the headlines in this crazy mixed up world, why would you want to open up that tired old can of peas? I'll make a swap. What about your marriage? Is this your answer? You've just done a very foolish thing, Chuck. Thanks for the visit. Be well and strong, God bless, but... Hello. Am I interrupting anything important? Hello, Mrs. Castle. Hello, Miss Benedict. Hi, honey. I didn't know you were in the house. I just came into town to shop. Hello, Marion. Hi, buddy. You know there's an eighth horror in this world, but needs publicity. What laundries do to sheets and pillowcases. Every month I buy a dozen. Why don't you try the May Company? They sell a fine percale sheet at a really modest price. Tell me, Mrs. Castle, do you and Charlie still use a double bed? Or is that a foolish question since you're separated now? You are separated, aren't you? Patty, you sure take the cake for persistence. Well, we're all sensible, sophisticated people. There's no use wearing crepe. There were over uh, 400,000 divorce cases in this country last year. It's getting as common as the ordinary head cold. You know, you may be right, Miss Benedict. However, I find it sad. And our personal life is not your affair. And you're the child who'll tell me. But, Marion, oh, listen, Yes, uh, I'm the one in this town who's not afraid to tell you to mind your own business. Marion, come on. All right. Just... All right. I'm glad we've come to an understanding. Oh, no, 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 Fuss Chuck. No, I know when I've worn out my welcome. I'm aware of all. Marion, gosh, for Pete's sake. Ace, you better do something or we'll all end up the creek. Look, Angel, what do you think you're doing? She doesn't play Madame Pry with me, not in my own house. Honey, wait! I'm in the movie business, darling. I can't afford your acute attacks of integrity. Oh, the way you talk to her. How's that? Liquid honey. Oh, I'm insincere with her. Husband, be insincere with me. Patty's got 18 million readers. Why antagonize her? Where's the sense? From time to time, I believe in being completely senseless. I'm a woman, not a diplomat. Oh, the way you said God bless to that one. I should think it'd make you want to throw up. Of course, you're not sincere. How have you been? <laughs> fine. Just fine. You know, I'm beginning to like this picture. It could make the Olympic team. You're right about this the Walt guy. He broods. There's a certain quality. I don't know. I've been looking at it a lot the last few days. Sometimes when I'm alone lately, I... an old clown waiting in the wing is waiting to go on. Cut a few capers, knock them dead. But he's done it a million times. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Too fortissimo? No. Okay. I buy it all back. Thank you. 
How's Billy? I haven't seen him for two weeks. Three weeks. Okay, three weeks. He has a cold. Fever? Mm -mm. But you know, it hangs on. I just can't keep him out of the ocean. <laughs> Is it lonely at the beach? Yes. Very lonely. Charlie, don't stop this, please. Come back, Angel. I can change. How can you change? You've been this way for so long now. But I can. You've got to believe me in this. But I have believed you before this any number of times. Marion, you don't think that those occasional girls... Yes, I do think those occasional girls. Surprised? Oh. Charlie, a man can live only one of two ways, either married or like a bachelor. What you want is the best of both. And that's not a marriage, not in my book. Charlie Cass. He was a wonder. I was Mrs. Cass. Now you're Hoff's Mr. Castle. Oh, come on. I don't buy that. I don't belong to Stanley Hoff. No. No, I'm a free agent. Are you going to sign his new contract? Mary. I want you to come back home to me. Just like that. Yes, I know I'm far from perfect, but you're making a big mistake if you think you can face this big, wide world alone. And don't tell me that you've got Billy because he still eats a grape in four bites. Without me, you don't have a family. You don't even have a friend unless it's Hank Teagle. And Hank was my friend long before he was yours. Hank asked me to marry him last night. And? What did you say? What could I say? He's got his nerve. All he said was, if. If? If, 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 if. I tried to avoid this conversation, didn't I? OK, you win. Famous husband remarks, you win. Please don't be such a housewife. Leave the lousy glasses alone. We pay somebody to do that. Russell! Straps broken on my watch, too. I'll be needing a check for Monday. Bills are piling up. All right, I'll have Harold send it from the office. Mrs. Castle, didn't hear you come in. This is a real pleasure. Thank you, Russell. Everything running all right? Smooth as silk, Mrs. Castle. Just fine. Well, that's good. I'll come back and see you before I leave. Thank you. Oh, well, would you mind taking this out? Yes, ma'am. Charlie. Charlie. Are you renewing with Hoff or not? Where does Hank Teagle get the nerve to propose to you? Oh, forget about Hank. He's leaving for New York in two weeks. Uh, to find a 40-cent gin? Oh, he's writing a new novel. It's been on the wagon for weeks. Look, you say you want me to come back to you. Well, believe me, I won't. Not ever, if you sign that contract. Oh, that again? I never expected to see the day when a firm deal would give you chills and fever. But neither did I. I'm assuming it's the next one, and it's a fabulous deal, but it's for seven years, and the life that goes with it. Or should I say the death that goes oh. with it? Look at yourself. You're half dead right now. I haven't seen you sparkle in years. Uh, you put on a show for other people, but I'm your wife. I know it. Charlie, my Charlie. What's happened to your mind, your spirit, your soul? Charlie Cass, the guy I married, he was a tiger. You like to argue because you believed in things. And what you believed in, you fought for. And that was Charlie Cass. What do you believe in now? What do you want? The wild-eyed kid I was, nursing a cup of coffee in Walgreens, yelling about the sad state of the theater. I'll, I'll tell you what I don't want. 
I don't want one of those witless, sold-out guys sitting around a gin table, swapping phone numbers and the latest dirt. Oh, how you talk. Oh, Charlie, I don't want you to sign that contract. You've given the studio their pound of flesh. You don't owe them anything. I'm half biggest star. I'm worth millions a year to them, and ice cold profits. He won't let me go. You know why. Well, tell him you're leaving Hollywood for good. Promise never to make pictures for anyone else. Oh, yes, fine. What do I do? TV, a play? The theater's a bleeding stump. You gotta wait years for one decent part. And anyhow, what is all this, this, this arty bunk? You know that this, this industry is capable of turning out good pictures, pictures with guts and meaning. Sure, sure, and we know some of the men who do it. Stevens, Mankiewicz, Kazan, Houston, Wyler, Wilders, Stanley Kramer, but never Stanley Hoff, never. Not once, not for the life of him, not for all the pompous press statements. Stanley Hoff will personally produce War and Peace by Tolstoy. Yeah, sure, that'll be the day. <laughs> Starring Charlie Castle with a bullwhip in one hand. And a bleached blonde in the other. Oh. Charlie, come here, please. Darling, there'll always be Stanley Hoffs in this world. Not just in the movie industry, but everywhere. Always one who, just by his contempt for decency and human dignity, tries to drag down the rest. Charlie, no. I'm Hoff's prisoner angel and signing this contract as the ransom fee. I didn't have the nerve that night. I made the wrong decision. We made the wrong decision that night in this room. I should have swung the other way. Darling, we both failed. I should have snapped out of my self-pity and shoved you. But we have a second chance. It's a gamble, I know. Because I know what Hoff can do if you refuse to sign. You think you know. Charlie, he's only a man. Not God to strike us down in his wrath. You really want to throw this away? I know I'm talking about your fabulous career and all that goes with it. But refuse him, Charlie. Turn him down. All right. I'll try. I haven't actually agreed to sign. I've been stalling for weeks, for months. And Nat's coming by. Maybe he, he can come up with a big idea. I'm very fond of Nat. He's good and kind. But you're going to have to fight this one through yourself. It may not work. It's in your hands. We do love. I mean, we do love each other, don't we? And that's the thing, the, the big thing. Rachel. I want you to tear Stanley Hoff apart, Tiger. Hi, Nikki. Hello, Marion. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Oh, you are, but it's all right. Charlie, the time for his rob, Mary. Oh, that can wait. No, it can't. He'll be right out, Mickey. Tiger, I want you in condition in the pink. Look, I've got a million things to do and a whole household to move by supper time. Household? Sure. Me, Billy, the whole shebang. We're yours, aren't we? Gentlemen, what do you know in there, Nat, old kid? Gentlemen, what do you know, Nat? What do you say, huh? Hey, Charlie. No, I'm greasy. You get all dirty, Nat. <laughs> say, Nat, when I'm through, how about me working that shoulder of yours, huh? Nicky, you're a sweetheart, but the doctor says diathermy and shots, no friction. Ah, <laughs> uh, first sight us. What's the fashion in the industry? Ulcers. The rage. I get bursitis. But, thank you, Nikki. You're a true gentleman for wanting to help. Water when you're thirsty. 
not to digress. I saw your business manager this morning. Harold? He says you're being a bad boy. Checks he didn't approve. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Ask Eisenhower if I can slip a hungry rider a couple of hundred bucks? That's the least of my problems. Problems? Life is all problems. They work out. Well, I got a honey for you, Nat. Marion's dead set against the contract. Her I'm going to talk to. You don't have to tell the old man. You two are such sweet mortals. I know she's a little hectic. I don't want to sign it. I'm afraid if I do, it'll cost me my family, Nat. Look, Marion will cool down, Charlie. I'll talk to her, and you'll sign the Nat, contract. Nat, you don't hear one thing I say, do you? Nothing. Darling, listen. Listen, why should I listen? You never listen to me. I'm listening now. I don't want to sign the contract. You don't? No, I don't. But... I thought you agreed to sign it. Listening doesn't mean agreement. I listen to Stanley, I listen to you. I listen till I'm blue in the face, but I did not agree to sign that contract. I can't keep doing these lousy, lousy pictures. But it's in the contract, black on white. You don't have to. I approve and make sure the scripts are good before you even see them. Matt, 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 this is Charlie. Been around a long time. Castle, you're talking to. Now, come on, give. Think me a way out. Well, darling, first I ought to tell you that Stanley had me in his office about the contract this morning. For two hours, hail Columbia. Which all leads to the fact that they're dropping in here. Stanley Hopkins, Smiley Coy. When? Any minute now to uh, invite you to the races. But it's going to be a showdown. Make the alcohol. Matt, you got to get me out of this. Darling, I'm terribly worried. Everybody has got the delusion that you're very tough. They mix you up with the parts you play. But I know you better. You're a special idealistic type. The only thing, business and idealism, they don't mix. It's oil and water. A movie is, is not a movie to you. It's, it's a gospel. But you are mistaken, dear sir and friend, in all humility. Dad, shut up. In all Please humility. Please shut up. Nicky, go up to the house. Go up to the house. Is there anything that we can do? Go up to the house, Nicky. Go ahead. Let me know when they get here. Thanks, Garrity. Charlie, a few important words. We are not in a bargaining position with Stanley, but I'll do anything you ask me within my power, as the good Lord sits about. Just get me out of here, Nat. Stanley wouldn't let you go. Suppose I just tore up the contract and we moved away. What would he do? Yes, what would he do? God forbid what he would do. Charlie, never underestimate a man because you don't like him. I know Stanley since before he had his fingers manicured every day. What he would do. We've got no choice, Charlie. You know what he's got on you. That thing we don't talk about. Darling, you sign or you go to jail. Every way is a way to die, huh? I'm older. Every way is a way to live. I hope you're right, Matt. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know how it is, Mr. Hop. You know, some fighters, they get punchy through, they hear things, but not me. Nang, nang, nang. Oh, see you next. Uh -huh. Two heads under one hat. What goes on here? How are you, Stanley? Smiley? Not being in my hair so frequently, I don't say hello to him. I didn't expect to find you here, Nat. I just came in out of God's sunshine, that's all. How'd you wake up this morning, Kitty? I didn't wake up, I came to. Fifteen minutes under a cold shower before I could remember my name. Would you hear about Joe Ackerman? No, no. what? Cancer. 
Oh, poor Joe. Poor Martha. I saw them only yesterday. I'll have to call there tonight. It's a wonderful robe. Where'd you get in? Oh, Dick Carroll's, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, that's a pleasure to feel next to your skin, huh? Smiley, you find me a few of those. Will do. Charles, we request the pleasure of your company at the races this afternoon. Mm, I don't think I can make it, Stanley. I'm ready to bar 10, union regulations permitting. Stanley? I have a little sparkling water, please, Smiley. Don't be an old fossil, Charlie. You'd enjoy the afternoon, and we'd appreciate your company. I'd like to. I really would, Stanley, but the fact is some friends from out of town, friends of Marion. You know how Charlie is, always giving of himself. Marion, she's a wonderful girl. I hope for your reconciliation with her as if uh, you both were my own family. Thank you very much. If we can express the divine will, and a happy marriage is certainly such an expression, and we are really beginning to live beyond our own selfish aims. That's very sweet of you, Stanley. Well, since we're here in friendly conclave, how about the contract? Come on now, it's growing whiskers. Well, I'm, I'm having trouble with trouble? it. Trouble? What sort of trouble? You tell me, I've got broad shoulders. Charlie, people can speak frankly to me. You're in a position which entitles you to make the highest demand, so please, you tell me your innermost thoughts. I don't want to sign the contract. Have you talked this over with Marion? Thank you, yes. Nice. Uh -huh. Well, you're still man and wife. Tree and bark, God's put that together. I can understand that. What does Marion want to see in the contract? Oh, well, it, it isn't just Marion's. No, we talked it over. I don't want to sign again. Stanley, Charlie no, feels... No, 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 you let him answer. Why? Well, it's the whole thing, Stanley, the whole idea of signing for that length of time. Stanley, people can always speak frankly with you, and that's exactly what Charlie wants to do. Charlie, what do you propose to do instead? Well, I, I want to leave Hollywood. I'll sign anything guaranteeing you I'll never make pictures again. I got nothing against you or Hoff Federer. It's just that I'm tired. I want to go away. Well, sure, sure. I understand. Tell you what, you go on a, a layoff, six months, a year even. No, no, I want to go for good. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Charlie Castle, I easily recall to mind our first meeting many, many years ago. Do you remember what I said to you at that time? Yes, some of the things. Oh, please, you'll excuse me for speaking with my eyes closed, but it helps me see better. I see a raw youth filled with that special vitality of talent. And I says, if memory serves, Charlie Cass, you're going to be one of the biggest stars in this business, and as sure as there are little green apples, you're going to run into many, many problems. That's what I'm here for, I says. My advice is free, given with pleasure. I may not always be able to help, but probably more than not. And Charlie Castle, you came to see me more than once. True? Yes, true, true. Stanley, Charlie has always had great respect for your judgment. Adulation, even. I'm skipping the years of coolness between us. You came to my office no more. The reason why, I never will understand. But nevertheless, I was there for you and yours and the vexing problems that are so manifold in the heat and toil of the day. And then, on a certain night, in this very room, the law spelled scandal. I was there for you then, too. Charlie, I want to tell you a little story. 
Charles, I'd like to tell you a little story. It may concern you. For a number of years, the woman that was my wife, certain facts came home to me. That was the year of the merger, Nat. These facts came up, as I said. My wife, drinking, certain scenes, certain hotel room in New York City, attempted suicides. I was out of my mind, but we brought it back that time. Smiley was good enough to enter my employer the year before. It all added up to one fact. Psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis. Thirty or forty thousand dollars down the drain in one year, but not begrudged. I thought to amuse her. I bought her a pleasure boat, the Alberta. Named after her, too. Nothing helped. Nothing. And then one day in my office, Frank Lubner was there, a pioneer in the industry, smiley coy. I drank a light scotch and soda, and I began to cry. And I haven't cried like that since I was a boy, because I saw, I saw through a revelation of pain that my wife was determining her innermost mind to destroy me and my career out of willful, malicious jealousy. You ask me why, I ask you why, but from that day on, from that day on, I realized one essential fact of life. The woman must stay out of the husband's work when he earns her bread and butter. Charlie. Oh, Charlie. The wife of the man in your position should have the regard and should have the respect to help him advance his career. Don't you think? Charlie, you can have anything I own. The pain of this moment. The memories. To understand how you feel. Gentlemen, I apologize. We understand, Stanley. Hear me, Stanley. Charlie's main worry in the past, and it's a commendable thing in itself. He wants to make better pictures. I meant what I said. I'm not bargaining with you, Stanley. You stand Stanley. up the bargaining position! But it's true, I can't force you to sign, can I? That's just what you're trying to do! Charlie, stand Shut up, that! Oh, Charles, Charles, I'm going to have to take this very much amiss. I offer you my hand, and you spit in my face. No, no, Stanley, Charlie. Stanley, I, I want you to let me go. We don't like each other. I know that, you know it. But I'll promise you anything you want if you'll just let me go. Stanley, please listen to him. He's asking this from the bottom of his soul. He... Shut up! I solemnly abjure realism. I need your physical presence on the land. I need your body, not your goodwill. Now, Charlie, I want you to sign this paper with one of the pens that ended the Second World War. This was used by a great American, General Douglas MacArthur. tell you how many long months of constructive dreaming have gone in this moment, and I will let nobody or nothing stand in the way of that dream. I'm asking you for the last time. Please let me go. I can't force you to sign, can I? Can I?
Congratulations, Kitty. <laughs> Coffee's Charlie's. I'll keep the pen. It's my only proof that the war is over, or that it was ever fought. <laughs> Charles, we all love you. You're a great artist, so we must learn to expect these temperamental actions. Eh? <laughs> From now on, Charlie, your problems are my problems. Never hesitate to call your slightest wish, your worry. What's with you tonight, Kitty? A certain party finds itself very fascinated. Mm. Yeah, but like I said, I'm... I'm all tied up. Sure, Kitty. Matt, I'm driving by your office. No, thank you. I'm going to Culver City. Goodbye, Matt. Darling, I know how you feel. The old man knows. <laughs> he twisted my neck like I was a ten-cent rag doll. It's not so terrible as you're making out. Like I was a little rag doll. You're making a whole sinus out of a simple basic fact. Seven years of financial security. Darling, take the long view. But what could I do? Matt. Marion, wait. I think you ought to know Hoff was here. I lost. Yes, I... Hello? Hello? Drinking by yourself, Charlie? Secret vices? Mm. Well, look at the wind blow in. Mrs. Bliss. Oh, isn't Buddy here? The secretary said he was. Yes, sir. I need a drink, Charlie. Help yourself. You should keep your door locked, Charlie. You could be kidnapped and held for a delicious ransom. <laughs> I think I'll have some tequila. Tequila always makes me frisky. You want some more tequila, Charlie? 
Where did you come from, Frisky Miss? Lunch at Frisgati's. Oh, with that second-class neurotic, Walden? How'd you know? Oh, small town. Oh, not baby. <laughs> oh, right here. You've cornered me at 20 different parties. Why do you always sniff me out when I'm drunk? Are you drunk, Charlie? It's due to the gills. The red neon lights are on and the sky is full of drunken blackbirds. So drink your drink and get out of here. Well, I stand on formality, Charlie. I find you very attractive. <laughs> you don't care what you do to your husband, do you? <laughs> do you? That hurts, boyfriend. You hurt me, darling. I'm a naughty girl. I wish I could say I didn't like it. Go home, Connie. Your mother wants you. Uh. Oh, life's a sweet thing, isn't it, Charlie? That's something Buddy will never understand. Look, I like Buddy. Last year, I almost left Buddy. But then, uh, that terrible thing came up. And, of course, I had to play my part, especially since it all got so involved. What do you mean, involved? Stop it, Charlie. Don't you think I know that Buddy went to prison for you? Don't you think I know that you killed that child in the auto accident? Not Buddy. Buddy told you that? the hero of the world to Buddy. He'd go to prison for you, but tell his wife. <laughs> no. That handsome, smiley coy called twice that night. He's very important. Now, why would he call Buddy? So, so I just put two and two together. And you got a crooked fire. Oh, oh get organized, Charlie. You're drunk. That's when I come around, remember? Me and uh, what you said, uh, red neon lights and the sky full of drunken blackbirds. <laughs> Slickers got me in a hurry. <laughs> Don't fight it, darling. Get with it. you think that she'd be here? It's, it's early yet. Look, she could be out in a store somewhere just squandering your loot. Well, don't sit in the house, Ace. Just get out. Find yourself a bar. Sauce up. Sure. That's, that's Dr. Castle's prescription for the blue grumps anytime. Buddy, no, you can't come here. I'm going up about two minutes. I gotta see a fella. Come on. Look, she'll probably walk in as soon as I hang up, which is gonna be right now. No, don't thank me, buddy. I'm... Yeah, I know. Oh, yes, I know, I know. I know, I'm a swell guy. Get out of here! You hurt me again, darling. <laughs> but you like that, don't you? There's a word for you. <laughs> well, why don't you say it, darling? <laughs> you better get out of here before I... I know, I know. 
Look, what are you? No, I, I mean seriously. Just what do you believe in? What? Fun, Charlie. Not in gloomy thoughts. Perfume and staying young and in grease of every sort and description. In secrets and in locked doors. Doing the wildest things that come into my mind. <laughs> Why don't you go home, Connie? Your mother's looking for you. Mm -hmm. I'll go home, Charlie. In a little while. In a little while. You do that. You do that little thing, because I got big trouble. I don't need you for more trouble. I can splash up my own mud in the office. Hi, Nicky. How are you? Fine. Come on! Sure, it's all right, only don't be too long. He has to have his lunch. <laughs> Billy! See you later. Bye. He got over his cold okay, huh? Last week. I called you six, seven times. I know. Very deep, deep, Angel. Listen, would you do me a great big favor? What? Come to dinner tonight? You mean at the house? Yeah. I have to do something for, for Buddy. He's been avoiding me ever since that Patty Benedict bit. You know, he thinks he let me down or something. I don't know. He's in trouble with the front office. Well, Hank asked me to have dinner with him tonight. Well, bring him along. I've invited the Blisses for seven. All right, we'll be there at 6.30. Charlie, because I'm coming to dinner at the house, it doesn't mean anything. Natch. All right, get over that corner. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, come on, break it up. Break it up. God sweet me. Hmm. Honey? Hmm. Hank, why don't you break down? Oh, I'm getting so I almost like this stuff. Yeah. Hey, are we all going next door to Marty's party? Oh, Connie, you'll have to excuse me. I've got a rotten headache. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, you kids run along. Maybe we'll catch up with you later. Okay, handsome. Should we walk or drive? Drive. Leave a lot of cars out front. The drunks will be dropping in here all night. <laughs> How old was that picture? Eight, nine years. 
Why, there you had a lot of steam. Mm, certainly did. See you later, shapeless. Shapeless? Thanks, Jonas. Good night, Mary. Good night, honey. Good night, Hank. Good night. Good night. Charlie. What'd you think of the picture, Angus? I kept wondering what would happen if you lost a big fight. Uncommercial. Kid thinks he's still writing for Mercury in the group. Would have turned out to what Uncle Hoff describes as disaster. What'd you think of it? Oh, I liked it the first time, in spite of the ending. Yeah, you grieve for the past like a weeping bird. When are you leaving, Hank? <laughs> I mean, leaving Hollywood. Tuesday or Wednesday. I'd like to see you before you go. How about Monday? Anytime you say. Okay, Monday. What are you doing? Hank's driving me back to the beach. But you have to go now? I mean, it's, it's early, 12.30 or so, can't we? Can't we sit down and talk or something? Well, I'm sorry, Charlie, but you know where that leads. Oh, darling, I... I thought that maybe the three of us would just sit around and yak it up a bit. Please don't go. Look, if you want to yak it up, why don't you go over to Monty's? He's have lots of bright types there for you. Take it easy, dear. Take it easy. That's where the trouble begins. Come on, now, be yourself. Oh, Charlie, that's another local remark, which means be just like me. Don't be yourself. Look, stay and have just one more drink. I don't need another one, thanks. Hank, how about another cup of coffee? No, thanks, Charlie. Up to here. Hey, listen. Did you ever hear a smiley story about the coffee bean and the water plant? Hank, Marion tells me that you asked her to marry you. Yes, I did. Let me get this straight. Aren't you my friend? Yes, Charlie, And I... what is this routine? Marion makes me want to live. Most people affect me differently. Look, Charlie, I'm sorry you're unhappy, but you lost her years ago. In fairness, you can't blame me. I'm not feeling fair tonight. Where did you stash your angel wings? Who gave you the right to make such a decision? My only right is to make my own decisions. That speech is right off of the couch. Get this straight, dream boy. Marion isn't going to leave me. I'll make my own decisions, too, Charlie. Marian, listen. No, I want to go home. Marion, would you let me say ten words? I think it'll be easier if I wait. I'm sorry. Sometimes I rant and rave as though I had something against you. But you've been good to me, so good to me. You're only good to me. This is all a bleak, bitter dream, a real dish of doves. Come in here and throw this mess of naked pigeons in my face. What can I do? What can I say? There are only two ways to forget everything. You either get drunk or you just stick a pencil in your eye. Charlie, I'm seeing a lawyer in the morning. Marion, please don't leave me. I swear I'm innocent, Angel. I, I swear to you that while I'm charming the world with my light fantastic, I'm bleeding to death under my shirt. you wake with the lawyer, Angel? Am I the worst oaf in the world? The world's a big place. But you're the worst one in my life. Me to take you back. Oh, Hank. Marion, you know I love you. I'll do anything in the world for your happiness, but please stop playing both ends against the middle. I don't mean to. Then let's face the basic problem. It boils down to a simple fact. 
Either you still love him and you want to live with him, or you don't love him and you don't want to live with him. Charlie, please don't worry. It will all work out. Nicky, do me a favor. Sure, Charlie. Get me a robe and a, a blanket. I don't want to sleep up there tonight. Charlie. Look, Charlie, if you're in trouble, if there's anything old Nick can do, anything. Anybody home? Bang, 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 bang. I'm here, Pete. Not a thing, not a thing. Well, where did you come from? Next door? Yeah, Monty Ritz. Real bash. Funny you couldn't hear him here. No, I had the door closed. It sounds wild. All the types. You know Monty. Was it with the girls? Everything. <laughs> How you feeling, Kitty? Blue. Like my dear baby's eyes. What'd you think of Tess? Tess? Nice night. Oh, the redhead. Well, she was built, but uh, I don't know. I wasn't in the mood. I think I lost the fat. I came home in red for an hour. What are you reading? I don't remember from one day to another. I saw Tommy Murdoch's new picture this afternoon. Yeah, how was it? Disaster. <laughs> yeah, well, cards or chess, or shall I take another hundred from you at Scrabble? No, let's sit this one out. What are you dreaming about? I'm always sick for the East for the Four Seasons. How old are you, Smiley? A million. But young enough, to my surprise, to still be losing my temper with a tramp like Dixie Evans. What's wrong now? Her mouth's too big. Go with Monty's party, drunk. There he is, she says. I turn around there, she says, cute as a skin parboiled ham. We know something smiling me, don't we, she says. I've been trying to get Marion to come back to me. Yeah? Yeah. That's all I need for her to find out I had a girl in the car the night of the accident. Dixie's been hinting like that in quite a few spots. You think she means any harm? Who knows harm? She's always liked you, Kitty. Call her up, have her come over, laugh it up a little. You're worried? What do you got to be worried about? You can, you can do a thousand things. Name one. Buy her off. We did with a contract. No, she's dishonest. She won't stay bought. Call her over, Kitty. All right. Anything for my art. Women, women, women. Well, it's Monty's new girl singing. A nice voice. You should see her. <laughs> Cute, huh? A barracuda. Hello? Miss Dixie Evans is there. Evans, yes. Would you get her? Please. Sounds like they're shooting off guns or something. Bongos. Hmm. A lot of women there? Loaded. What do you think of women, Kitty? There's room in the world for them. Dixie? Oh, oh, I can't No, no, not you, Charlie. No, it's somebody here. Oh, she was a great boy. Why are you? Oh, there's so much noise here. Listen, would you please get him to stop? It's all right, baby. No, I have a very important it's call. It's all right, me. honey. You'll be quiet. Hello? Oh, gee, Charlie. I, I swim in your pool now? Well, I'd love to. Uh, listen, how do I get there? Yeah? Listen, will you cut it out, please, honey? Uh, huh? Look, I'll, I'll take Monty's car. Yeah, you know I never walk anywhere. Yeah, right away. Pronto. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, of all the types. Oh, that's the first nice thing that's happened to me in a month of Tuesdays. Bye, honey. Careful what you say to Dixie, Charlie. 
Don't give her any more ammunition. Listen, have you offered to buy her contract up? Two months ago. Nothing. Two months? You mean she's been blabbing that long? Longer. She's a stupid little tramp. Two bits worth of nothing with a little power. She doesn't want more money? She doesn't know what she wants. I'm betting even money we have to get rid of her. Oh, fine. How do you work that? Well, what do you do, ship her east? Charlie, she's all mouth. All gab. So, gotta get a fix, she never opens her mouth again. Well, let's wait and see developments. Now, I think I can talk to her. I think... Hey. I'm a little fuzzy tonight. You know, you're saying funny things, Smiley, but I don't see you smiling. What do you mean, she never opens her mouth again? That's it. What's it? Charlie, she'll have to be removed. Removed? Sorry to throw the raw meat on the floor. A fact, like a rock, has certain dimensions and gravity. I've gone over all the choices, one by one. <laughs> She'd make a great actor. Life's a queer little man, Kitty. Yeah, Kitty. What does Stanley know about this? Only what he wants to know. There's a reason he pays me $75,000 a year, Kitty. <laughs> you know, for a minute there, I thought that... Charlie, you're a fanciful type. My end of the business, you have to know types. Take your type. The warrior minstrel of the forlorn hope. That's you, doll. That's Dixie. I'll slide out the back way. The warrior minstrel of the forlorn hope. Wait. What's that from? It's a phrase the Irish used to understand. You know me. I'm from those cynical selves. Ideals, Kitty, nowadays. A lost crusade. Don't study life, Charlie. Get used to it. Hey, you changed the subject. You bother and remember everything I said tonight. Pleasant dreams, Kitty. Spiley, listen. Take a light one. Don't be silly. All right, you, you masochist. <laughs> Give me a scotch and soda. I know. Hey, how do you know I was at Monty's party? Radar. Oh, you're a faker. You're very sweet, but I don't trust you. Listen, who's at home? Only the crickets. Charlie, why don't you like me anymore? I like you, Dixie. Oh, I haven't seen you since that very day I sat in this here chair with you and your agent. Didn't I shock him when I asked for my contract? Oh, Nat's been around, honey. In that whole big studio, when I think of some of the things they do and say. Such as? Uh, you gotta be a girl with a good figure to know. There's some of those guys on a rainy afternoon. Oh, I'd like to brain them. Hey, did you know that I'm perfectly proportioned? Well, aren't I? Yes. Of course, I understand now that temperament is much more important than shape and size. But it's like I still won't get glasses. You know, I can't see across the street. Well, 
glasses are ugly. Or I'm, hey, who wound me up? Come here. So why don't I see you more often in my young and thrilling life? Here, have a shot of Dr. Castle's painkiller. Snake oil. I don't care if I do see a snake. I'm sure I'd much rather see a snake than a Hollywood producer. Who invented soda? How do they make? Ooh, what a weirdy. You're the only one who can call me that. I I'll tell you why. I like you, Charlie. You've been very kind and considerate to me. And that is a very special matter in my special memory box. I'm going to get a dog. A poodle. You like poodles? Big or little? I'll tell you why. When I was 16, my family threw me out of the house. That makes you very nervous. I, I mean, a thing like that makes you very touchy. I, they just kind of gave me up for lost. To this very day, my mother can't tell my father that I send them money. Catholics believe in large families. But I tell you what, I'm saving my money now. I'm waiting for Mr. Wright to come along. If I ever meet the guy around here. My name is Mud in Hollywood. Hey, am I boring you? Oh, no, honey, no. I like to hear you talk honest. I know what you're trying to do, Charlie. What? Make me forget about the swim you promised me. Oh, they'd drown me if they could, that studio. Why? I needle them. I keep hinting about your accident. It makes them nervous for a change. Oh, you want to be careful. Hoff's a man with a crocodile's temper. Oh, don't tell me about Mr. Hoff. Calling me child one minute, and then without even changing his face. You don't see those people from the bottom like I do, Charlie. You're a successful, self-made man. Dixie, why don't you give me a break, please? Oh, sure, Charlie, dear, how? Well, every time that you talk about the accident, you know something. Oh, that... Charlie, don't be like that. You have nothing to be afraid of from me. But I don't talk in my sleep. So don't worry. But I am worried, Dimples. Some night you'll have a skinful and inadvertently you're going Ooh, to... Oh, but I got a skinful now. And I didn't tell you anything you didn't know already. Did I? Oh, like about Sammy Burke, for instance. You know, he took this... this girl. Dixie. You're telling me now. Well, that's because you asked me. No, I didn't ask you. Well, I'm only giving you an example. Oh, Charlie, dear, I know where to stop. But I don't see any reason to make it easy on them. I hate them. You know, it says actress on my contract. But they hired me for my figure, not to act. But you've been acting. <laughs> Those bits? Three cigarette girls in two whole years. You call that acting? Big part coming up, testing you next week. Won't you come out to dinner? And the next week never comes. Charlie, they hire girls like me to entertain the visiting exhibitors. We know how to dance and dress. The clothes come out of wardrobe. It's cheaper than if they... I'm a deductible item. They write me off the books. Listen to Uncle. Call me, dog. Why don't you go back to Oh, that lousy studio. They lousy up and then they call you lousy. <laughs> Honest, Charlie. Wouldn't you be mad? Sure, I would. Well, there, see? Hey, look. Look, look at this bit. It's what I learned. Dearie, where is this swimming pool you promised me? Here, coming right up. Filled with brandy. Because the baby, she cannot be kept awake. 
sing. Oh. <laughs> hey, is there somebody standing there? This is my wife. Miss Evans. Uh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Castle. Uh, we were having a conversation. Uh, well, I gotta get back to Monty's party now, Charlie. Uh, thanks for the drink. And the advice about my career. Sure, Dixie, and thanks for coming over. It's, it's been very pleasant. But Charlie? I meant everything I said about the studio. Good night, Mrs. Castle. Lucky I didn't find Adam and Eve in the swimming pool. Marion, you're wrong. She's a little... Sincere. I don't care what she... Well, I'm sorry, dear, but you're very wrong, and I'll... I'll bet you 60 bucks you're wrong. Look. Look, I, I was getting ready to go to bed, and a certain matter came up. I... My heart should be going a mile a minute. I don't know. Call a cab, will you? All right, I'll call it myself. Marion. Can't you look at me and see the truth? I arrived a little too soon, that's the truth. You know, I had Hank drive me all the way back from Brentwood because I really thought you needed me. I'm all kinds of a fool to give you a second thought, aren't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what do you want from me? Bright dialogue? Something brilliant and witty. What's your hurry? I'll call a cab any time. You've got all night to call a cab. You're a great little one for dramatic exits. But I think that if this is the end of the line, we ought to get it up on the table and sit down. No, thank you. If you think I'm going to stay here and listen to you, you're mistaken. Shut up! I'll just about take it. position of self-justification. For the time being, we're gonna, we're gonna throw away the bunch of rotten grapes. That's me. That you seem to feel is me, though. I must say, I think your judgment is lousy. You swat the fly on my nose with a hammer. And we throw it away. Because every time we talk, every time we talk, it's about Charlie Castle. Never once about his long, suffering, saintly wife, Mary. Do you know where your fatal error lies? I think you ought to know, so I'm going to tell you. You're afflicted with a fine, fat case of merchant psychology. You, you bargain and trifle with your own nature. That's your error. And tonight you're about to possibly destroy your life and certainly mine. Didn't we pick each other out of millions? Can this be bargained away by saying, like a merchant, Marion will be herself and love Charlie only if he meets a certain price and conditions. Where is the rich, full-hearted woman I know you to be? I say no. No more bargains, no more conditions, no more of this, this either or, neither nor web that strangles us both. I say no. And I say down with not being what we are. You can talk. You can talk. How you can talk when you're Charlie Cass. I'd like to beat you, beat you. Marion. Beat you. I need you. I love you. I promise you understanding, devotion, anything I can give you. Listen, if you leave me, cross your fingers as you go. In fact, pray for me. You stay, it's got to be real. You've got to stop reaching for that dawn of you. You've got to love me that much more than you do yourself.
Charlie. Do me a favor, will you? Grow up before it's too late. Just one more shot, Charlie. Ready in a minute, I guess. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Well, thank you, Annie. So you're leaving the salt mines, Hank, huh? Going back to write the great American novel? Hollywood's lost, New York's game. Lucky guy. I kind of envy you, Hank. Well, it's still time. Chief's a big train. Do you want me to make reservations for you? <laughs> What's the book going to be about? Man. Average man. Man very much like you. Oh, yes, that's very average. Now, how could a man become a popular movie star without reflecting the average in one way or another? It's really about a guy like me? It's a fable about moral values. Success, happiness. You don't think Marion's going to be happy here, do you? No, I don't think she's going to be happy here. Why not? Because you were an idealist, Charlie, and you sold out. You joined Half Coy and Company, and that left you half an idealist. There's nothing more tortured on the face of this earth, neither fish nor fowl. A man who sold out his dreams, but he can't forget. Yeah, but there are reasons, pal. You don't have all the facts. The Irishman wrote, I think I sent it to you once, the quintessence of Ibsenism. He said that there are three kinds of men. First, the realist. Now, that's Coy. He's made his deal with the devil. He wouldn't be any different. And then there's the Philistine, like Hoff, who couldn't be any different. But they are what they are. They have their own integrity. They're incorruptible. And then there's the third kind, the idealist. That was you. Half idealism, Charlie, is the peritonitis of the soul. Go write your book, Hank. Make it scandalous. Wire me for money any time you need it. Somebody has to complete the work he was born to do. Naive, ain't I? Yes, but it's one of your best qualities. Peritonitis of the soul. Those are the words you use above ground. Goodbye, Hank. Goodbye, Charlie. Struggle, you may still win a blessing. Nothing that got on the screen. Stanley could never understand what his scripts were about. Charlie, something's come up. Something hot. I told Nat no, I wouldn't no, do no, that no, music. Nothing to do with the musical. Stanley blew his top with Dixie Evans. He asked to come in this afternoon and have a talk. She showed up, one hour late, drunk, lugging in a dog and a leash. A poodle? Yeah. Situation being serious enough, Stanley kept his temper. He talked to her like a father. He said... Let me tell you what he said. He told her about his boot black days in Bayonne, then he chimed softly, the uneasy lies, the head routine, and then before even you knew what was happening, he was making with the tears. Then what happened? She laughed in his face, told him the whole town knew about his crying. It was time to change the act. He hit her? Knocked her down and kicked her black and blue. May have broken one of her ribs. They taped her up in the infirmary. Our story is that the dog, one of those great big monsters, yanked on the leash and threw to the floor. She knows she can't make an assault story stick, but she says she's ready to spill your story to the press, particularly Patty Benedict. That's love, that's love. Where is she? 
That bar across from Schwab. A woman with six martinis can ruin a city. Well, what are you smiling about? Why am I smiling? Well, what's next on our sordid agenda? Somebody's got to saddle a horse. I think you'd better get over there and get her out of that bar. Get her to where? Her apartment. Why me? You're the only one she'll go with. Now, don't worry about the telephone. If you've taken care of that, it's been yanked. Feed her some martinis. They'll keep her quiet. Suppose they don't. They will. The gin's doctored. <laughs> on the floor now what do i do leave the minute she passes out from that moment on you're in the clear report back to the studio you've been there all day long making publicity still <laughs> smiley your words have hair on them your brains are full of lies. Fuss me, Charlie. There's no time to lose. Just bear in mind one thing. The day you first scheme, you marry that scheme and the scheme's children. Everything you are this minute depends on a few drinks and a trollop's guts. And what do you think she is? A moth? A bug? Speak easy. Keep flexible, kitty. She'll go unremembered by the end of the week. Where's Stanley? He doesn't know about this. Then we'll have to tell him, won't we? You find him, Smiley. I'll get mad. There's no reason for them to be involved. Oh, but there's plenty of reason for me to be involved, even deeper than before, huh? I wouldn't do that, Kitty. And don't raise your voice again. Oh, don't you remember? I'm the warrior minstrel of the forlorn hope. Sorry, darling. It's all right. Didn't mean to interrupt. Hello, Marion. Hello, Smiley. Well, I'll get my coat from the kitchen. What's she doing here? Oh, cheap surf labor. I pay her by the lifetime. I mean, you were separated just the other night. I'm waiting. Take that library phone and get that good gray weeper here. Okay. I can't count on you. I'll handle this myself. Oh, no. Murder is indivisible, Smiley. I'm finding that out like chastity. There's no such thing as a small amount of it. I'm finding that out, too. Don't blow your wig, scholar. Get me Stanley Hoff. All right, I'll do it myself. Don't be boyish, Charlie. Did he involve Stanley in a thing like this? He's already involved, up to his neck. Prove it. Try and prove it. For your own sake, this is nobody else's business, not even your wife's. Marion! Marion! Smiley Coy wants to tell you something. Gee, I think you really flipped. All right, Charlie's drink. Go on, tell her, Smiley. Go ahead and tell her. Don't be impetuous, Kitty. Watch your step. Marion, Charlie's not sober enough to discuss the script today. I have certain facts in my hands, Smiley. If they blow up, I've got bleeding stumps left, not hands. But you go, too. This is Charlie Castle for Stanley Hoff. Charlie, what is it? Are you going to tell her? Marion, Charlie gets fanciful ideas about his friend. Why, he's actually accusing me of plotting the murder of a little studio bit player. I was with him in the car the night of the accident. I'll explain later, Marion. Please, take the library phone and get Nat here right away. Maybe you know what you're doing. I think I'll wait. Oh, I know you'll wait. You wait and wait and wait. You mishandle your friends, Kitty. You? You're not my friend. That pathetic little girl is my friend. Lily? Uncle Hoff, if you please. Look, Lily, could you come over here right away? And I know I'm not only expressing my views, but yours as well. As for your idea that Smiley Coy thought in terms of violence and crime, with all due respect to what you think you thought, I can't give it credence. You're saying that Smiley didn't tell me anything, I just dreamed it up. I wouldn't be so rash as to say you dream by day, but after a few drinks, isn't it possible? What is possible is exactly what I said. 
Let me round out my thoughts. Don't round out your thoughts. I may continue. I don't want you to continue. As I was trying you to say. You never told that the embroidery of your speech is completely out of proportion to anything you have to say. All right. I'm listening. What do you have to say? He came here one hour ago. He said there was trouble. He then proposed that I... I was nothing of the sort. Say a man like Smiley Coy, a former major in the U.S. Army Air Force, a friend of many, I don't know where to begin, the late Al Jolson, Jerome Kern, Bill O'Dwyer, to say that this man plotted murders to stagger reason. You're wasting valuable time. Stanley, you're a thousand percent right. Pneumonia is at the door, and we are talking about a headache. And what would you do in my place, Nat? We have to convince this girl not to talk. Yes, I agree with you, but you can't ask me to go into battle with my hands tied. I've always been a simple man, and I still make my breakfast on a roll, butter, and a cup of coffee. Mr. Hoff, can't you stop talking about yourself? Why does the woman have to be here? The lady stays. Look, Stanley, I want to go to this girl myself and talk to her like a father. See if we can't work out some feasible cash offer out of my own pocket. You and I could split the difference. It's too late for that. This girl is without the fundamentals of an education and understanding. But, Stanley, what is the percentage for a few dollars to cut off our nose and bite our face? When I say no, I mean no. There have been a few people in this town who have found that out. But the girl must All have... All right, thank you very much. Wait a minute. What did Smiley whisper into that phony tin trumpet? You tell him, Smiley. Dixie's still at the bar, being entertained by a friend of mine. If anything happens to her... You're selling fish four days old, Kitty. She's with Marty Ritz. Is he a conspirator, too? Why not? For all I know, why couldn't you have some kind of blackmail on Marty, too? We're talking about murder. Your client has to learn how to talk. We know who the expert is when it comes to murder. Stanley, please. A boy like you, who are you? Who are you? Are you some kind of special aristocracy because the, the female public wants to make love with you? Who are you with your dirty, unmanicured fingernails? And what? What are you without hot federated behind you? I built the studio. I, I, with my brain and my hands, I ripped it out of the world with my brains and my hands. And who are you? No, this must stop. Oh, do I have to listen to this miserable boy? A man like myself who's wined and dined with presidents and kings. Oh, my aching back. Do I have to cater to this? More line of your phony senatorial eloquence and boy. The way I'll chop you down like firewood. It is a bit of miserable pity to have to talk to you. That's it. That's the deal. Charlie, I beg of you, please. We never have to talk to each other again. Matt, you're my agent. From now on, it's you and him. I never have to talk to him again. You'll drive me too far. Or will I? What's your boiling point, Uncle Huff? Oh, don't suck. Don't act bored. And please don't cry. Charlie, I beg of you, please. I'm deliberately tampering with your modest ego, Stanley, because today I see what Stanley Schreiner Huff would do to protect an investment. Murder. This man buries himself with his mouth. Look at him. Get his act. He's trying to play the crocodile in what is he, a little <laughs> lizard under a rock. Smiley, if you get together with the legal department in the morning, you comb through the castle contract and you find me an opening, you find me a pay. Stanley, I think there's one other solution. Oh, yes, here it comes, the gimmick, the twist, the old switcheroo. There's always a twist, sweetie. They always work in pairs. There's an angle to this Dixie problem. Marin, it depends upon you. What? You and Charlie have been separated three times in the last two years. Do you love him enough to make a sacrifice? Do I love him? Let him finish, dear. Dixie would marry Charlie in a minute. It'd be the fulfillment of all her dreams. Community property laws automatically take care of you. Half of everything Charlie owns belongs to you. Gentlemen, I can't believe my ears. Let him finish. Before you jump in where it doesn't concern you, Nat. This woman has been having to do with a writer we had on the lot recently. That isn't true. From time to time, they had relations. That just isn't true. Let me handle this. Of course, you have proof. Records. You have records of conversations I've had with Mr. Teagle in his office. 
and tape recordings in his office and on his couch. Who ordered such recordings to be made? I couldn't say. That's out of my hands. Where are they? In my car. Get them. Get them, Smiley. Get them. Live and let live has always been an important model with me, Marianne Cassidy. I have nothing against you personally, you understand. But sometimes, for the good of the company, I'm forced to play a little rough. Nat, a little sparkling water. All right. All right. My career is finished, and I'm willing. Namely, because you're the meanest, dirtiest skunk that God ever put breath into. And this is Mr. Hart. A man that I fall down on my knees and thank my maker that I don't have to play ball with him anymore. <laughs> Excuse me, Charlie dear, that I'm crying. <laughs> don't worry, Barry. Don't worry, Charlie. Before I'll get you in trouble, I'll put my own head on the railroad track. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, there's nothing to defend about those records. It's late. Don't you boys ever go home to dinner? Now do that. Do that for me, Smiley. Take off home. Get him out of here. <laughs> Stay! Ah, oh, you're so lucky. But if this were a movie, you'd have been on the floor ten times. I'll break you. I'll break you like I did. No. <laughs> no, no. No, no. I'll let the law do it for me. I'll let the law do it for me this time. And you lose everything. You lose everything. This is the scandal and a disaster and a ruin. That child's family and the insurance company will take everything off your back in any court in the land. Close off your back, off your child's, and off that woman's. Everything goes, child. Everything goes. The house goes. The paintings go. And you, oh, you go. Oh, no, child. Oh, no. You threw away a kingdom today. Kitty, I leave you to the wolves and the knives. You no longer have me in the studio to handle the press for you. You're through. But I said still goes if anything studio happens to no that girl. Further interest in that girl. things beyond money to that man, but this much money. You don't have to worry. He, he talks with his mouth, but he'll protect his investment. And in the meanwhile, I, I tell you what Uncle Nat will do. I'll take Miss Dixie Evans home with me, and then out of my own pocket, I, I'll offer her a $10,000 bill. No, Nat, it's too late. It's too late from my point of view. I can't go on covering one crime with another. That's... 
That's Macbeth. Charlie, dear, please stop wringing your mental hands. Macbeth is an allegory, Nat. One by one, he kills his better selves. <laughs> My back is stiff. Go on, Nat. I'll go over later and talk to Dixie. The worst that can happen, she passes out and Monty puts her to bed. He's done it before. I'll call you later. You promise? Yes, around eight. Now, don't worry, I'll call you. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye, darling. You'll call? Yes. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Why did I add this burden to that grotesque, devoted soul? <laughs> did you ever notice he moves his lips when he reads? Darling, here's Nicky. Well, what do you say? Can I get you something? Marion? Charlie? Yeah, Nico. Oh, run a bath for me. Good and hot. My back is stiff. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll take care of that. A thing between you and Hank. No, darling, I didn't. Of course I... Uh, don't explain. I believe you. Look how sweaty. My hands. Come here, Angel. Sit here. all the possible roads ahead. No, don't bother. We won't silence that girl. It's become the cause of her life. You see, everyone needs a cause to touch greatness. Hank doesn't leave until tomorrow. Did you ever tell him about all of this? No. Why don't we call him over? Hank knows how to fix. All right. your advice about something. Yes, it's very important. The times okay. beyond are cold and lonely. Far away as the stars. But there are two of us. Billy mustn't grow up to be a, a rich man's son. He won't. They're usually made of sponge cake. But he won't be. You've taught me so many things, darling. Even how to listen to music. Play some music. All right. What would you like to hear? Something immortal. I don't know, anything that's on the machine. Never leave him, Hank. It's not just that I'm a wife of the old-fashioned school, but I'm so deeply a part of his existence. No matter how many times I leave, I always go back. He's part of me. The most terrible things he can do to me are better than not having him.
Yes, darling, it is. Turn on the lights. What's the matter, kid? You were my friend. You were my friend. I knew what she was. It tore the heart out of me every time it happened. You were my friend. How could you? How could you do it? You want to hit me? Please hit me. I know you're a better man than I am. I, I mean, such a swell guy you were, Charles. I, I always looked up to you. But when she told me, she laughed in my face. That's how I resign. <laughs> You murdered Cass. I was there. I saw him do it. Charlie, the tub's almost full. Run out of big towels up there, though. So I'm going to get some from the cabana. Did you ever know that all my life I've yearned for people to bring out the best in me? All that embitter you. I pledge you a better future. committed to you. We won't talk about the past. Telephone for you, Mrs. Castle. It's Billy. He's calling from the Stevens. Oh, thank you, Russell. Look, there'll be four of us. Will you make a light supper? Light supper for four, right. Oh, and no parsley on anything. Mr. Castle doesn't like it. Right. Hello, darling. How are you? Hmm? Oh, poor cowboys, but a shame. Well, why don't you hit him back? No. Wait a minute, Billy. I was wrong. Don't hit him back. Explain to him that... Since he's bigger than you, it isn't fair. Oh, sure, I'll pick you up after lunch tomorrow. Now, don't forget to brush your teeth. Good night, darling. I just let myself in. I'm sorry about what happened here this afternoon, Marion. Deeply sorry. May I use your phone? Don't go. You'll be interested in what I've got to say. Mr. Hoff is a very vain man. We have to cater to that sometimes. Lily, put me through the old man. It's important. Where's Charlie? Taking a bath. What do you want? You misunderstand, Marion. I'm nothing more than a sort of memo pad for Mr. Hoff. For Stanley. The girl left the bar ten minutes ago. Tried to navigate across Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, and all that heavy home-going traffic. That's the picture. Killed instantly. How do you like that for the luck of the Irish? I'm here using Charlie's phone now. 
Okay, I'll be right back in. Bye. Marion, before you say anything. What a happy coincidence. It was a silly bus that hit her. Changes everything, doesn't it? Does it? Not that Stanley's forgotten what happened here this afternoon. Some sort of an apology should be arranged. Carefully, of course. And yours is just the level head to do it. Don't you have a memory from one hour to the next? Now, don't go dramatic on me, Marion. Seven years is a long time. We've got a long road to hoe. How does someone like you live? This afternoon, you try to ruin a man who's ten times your better. And when you were finished, you towed it out of here in the footsteps of a thing not even fit to breathe. Hey, Charlie, something must be wrong with the tub. What's going on? Is that water? The water leaking down through the kitchen. Charlie, I think you let the tub run over. Charlie. Nicky? Charlie, there's water all over the hall. Charlie, try to break the bathroom door. door down. Listen. Charlie, open the door! Come on, Repeat a word. Listen! Russell, let me Get Dr. Curley. Get Stanley. Send them here to Charlie Castle's house right away. Now, you get here when you do your work, and here's your work. Take this down word for word. Charlie Castle, renowned star of 30 Hoff Federated Pictures, died today of a heart attack in his Bel Air home at 7.55. Pacific Daylight Time. At his bedside was his physician, Dr. Curley, his wife, Marion, his seven-year-old son, Billy, and his close friend and associate, Stanley Schreiner Hoff. I'll get that out to the AP, UP, and the rest of the wire services. Don't ask questions. Bring a dozen studio cops and you come, and this place is going to be a madhouse in a minute. What? Tell Stanley he slashed himself in three places. Snap out of it. Go on, clean up, change your clothes. It'll be a nice piece of change. Hey, Pop. Punchy, I'm talking to you. Come on, snap out of it. Oh, you're killing. Oh, Punchy. You found him. Crowded him. It's all right, Hank. I'm all right. Loads will be here any minute. I'll talk to the reporters. It won't be necessary. I'll be here. That's why it's necessary. There's no time to get contentious, Kitty. Your work is finished here. There will be no photographers, no more lies, no display. I'll tell the story. He killed himself. Out of a pained and anguished love he had for others, he gave up his salvation. 
that no man had a greater reverence for life, a greater zest for living. Yes, he was wrong. But he just couldn't go on hurting those he loved. Help. 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 